We are blessed by God as we walk into obedience to God. We know that God's instructions to us are always best for us. So we're going to continue to walk according to the Lord's instructions this morning. Open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 3. We are learning from Moses how we can uh, think and live God's way. These principles that God downloaded to Moses years ago are true for us today. So I want to move through these principles, the first four principles, uh, rapidly this morning as we see them here in Exodus chapter 3 and Moses his life, and then we'll apply them to our lives today as well. The first principle is God comes to us with his plan for us. God came to Moses with his plan for Moses in the burning bush. God knew where Moses was, and he knew how to get Moses' attention. The second point is God is in control, not us. God remembered his covenant with Abraham. God reminded Moses of his covenant with Abraham because God was going to use Moses to fulfill the covenant. Moses, the Israelites, Pharaoh, the Egyptians were under God's control. As the psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. The third principle is God's plan for us is clear to us in verses 9 and 10 of Exodus chapter 3. We read, so because the Israelites cry for help has come to me, and I have also seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them, God told Moses, therefore go. I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God's plan for Moses was clear to Moses, go to Pharaoh. Moses could not stay where he was and go with God. As Moses went by faith in God, God revealed the details of his plan for Moses as he fellowshiped with Moses. The fourth principle is God promises to be with us. Look at verse 11 and 12. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will certainly be with you. And this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people of Egypt uh, out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. God told Moses, I will certainly be with you. God called Moses, God equipped Moses, God was with Moses. Now, I want us to look at how these these principles apply to you and me today. We are members of God's family by God's grace alone, through our faith alone, and Christ Jesus alone. We trust in Jesus and his finished work on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection that opens a way for us to receive forgiveness of sins and enter into a relationship with God. And so we are members of God's family by God's grace through our faith in Jesus. We are disciples. We are followers. We are ministers. We are witnesses for God. Jesus. And so we see how these principles apply to you and to me. So let's look at these principles for us. The first principle is God comes to us with his plan for us. Now we see God's plan for us as his disciples, followers, ministers, and witnesses in the great commission that Jesus shared with us. Jesus shared the great commission with us in Matthew 28. Uh, Just before Jesus ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of the throne of God, he shared with his disciples then and us today the Great Commission. Matthew wrote in Matthew 28, in verses 18 to 20, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is God's plan for us. God knows us. He knows where we are. He knows what's going on with us. And God knows how to get our attention. God's plan for us is taken from his commission to us. God's plan for you and me as he transforms us in the likeness of Christ is quite simply to go and make disciples of all nations who make disciples of all nations, which means we have to know and obey God's word so that we can teach others to know and obey God's word. God comes to us with his plan for us. Second principle, God is in control, not us. Look at what Jesus said at the beginning of verse 18. Jesus said, all authority. What authority? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. No one and nothing is outside of God's authority. 
We know that God is in control, not us. God's a sovereign God. He's in control. He knows what he's doing with us, in us, for us, through us, and around us. Therefore, we can rejoice and we can rest in his control of us. All authority, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So God comes to us with this plan for us, go and make disciples of all nations. He's in control, not us. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And then we go, God's plan for us is clear to us. God's plan for us is go. Go. That's God's plan for you and for me. It's clear. Couldn't get any more clear. Go. And we know that God tells us what we need to know about his plan, not all we want to know about his plan. God tells us what we need to know about his plan, go, not all we want to know about his plan, because God leaves that space so that we can follow him by faith, which is what he desires. And as we go by faith in God day by day, he reveals the details of his plan for us as he fellowships with us, just like we see with Moses. Now, God is not calling you or me to go to Pharaoh today or this week. But God is calling us to go, to follow him by faith. He leads, we follow. So you may be thinking, well, I get that. I understand that, Mark. That's great. But where am I supposed to go? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. The answer is obvious. It's simple. It's encouraging. It's transformative for us. Go to your wife, go to your husband, go to your children, go to your family, go to your friends, go to your brothers and sisters in Christ, go to our church, go to your jobs, go to your workplaces, go to your meetings in person, go to your meetings online, go to your extracurricular activities, go to your schools, go to your universities. Go to your neighbors, go to your neighborhoods, go to your city, go to your county, go to your state, go to your nation, go to the nations, go in obedience to Jesus, go with the truth of Jesus, go out of your love for Jesus, go with the power of Jesus, go for the glory of Jesus, go today, go this afternoon, go tonight, go this week, go every day, go all through the day, go and make disciples for Jesus, Go and seek God first and his kingdom and righteousness, knowing that everything will be added unto you. Go and trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Think about God in all your ways, and he'll make your path straight. Go, walk by the Spirit, not the flesh. Go, work as unto the Lord and not for man. Go, let your light shine before people so they may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. Go and be kind and compassionate toward one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God has forgiven us. Go and comfort one another with the comfort you have received from God himself. Go and consider it a great joy whenever you face trials and tests of many various kinds because you know the testing of your faith develops endurance. Endurance must have its full effect in your life so that you can be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Go and don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit those who listen. Go and encourage one another daily as long as called today so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. Go and keep Keep on fighting the good fight of the faith. Go and, do, and be sober-minded and alert for your adversary. The devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Go and be strong in the Lord and in his vast strength. Go and put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the schemes, tactics of the devil. Go and make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Go and serve one another in love. Go and speak to one another in truth, God's truth to one another. Go and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Go and love your wife as Christ loved the church. Go and encourage and support your husband as unto the Lord. Go and raise your children in the nurture, training, and admonition of the Lord. Go and love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Go and love your neighbor as yourself. Go and love Christ as he has loved us. Go and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Go and humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you and do lift you up in due time, which is the right time. Go and follow Jesus. Jesus, and he will make you fishers of people. Go and make disciples for Jesus. God's plan for us is clear to us. Go, go, go. You and me, praise the Lord. Give God a hand. Give God a hand. Let's give God a hand. Go, go. 
Fourth principle, God promises to be with us. God calls us, God equips us, God is with us. Notice what Jesus did as he ended the Great Commission. Jesus said, remember, I will be with you always to the end of the age. Say always. always. Say always. always. How long? Always. always. Means always. To the end of the age. Forever. So here's how it works. When God saved us, he placed his Holy Spirit in us. We're never alone because God is with us by his Holy Spirit in us. So whatever he calls us to do and wherever he calls us to go, as we go, he's with us. Since God is with us, he will empower us to fulfill his plan for us and his strength for his glory. And so we see these principles. True for Moses true for us today, which brings us to the fifth principle. The fifth principle is an important principle for you and me to understand, to apply in our lives. Here's the fifth principle that we see this morning. God gives us a choice. God gives us a choice. Look in verse 10 once again. God spoke to Moses, therefore go, I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God gave Moses a choice to go. God called Moses to go. God equipped Moses to go. God wanted Moses to go. God promised Moses he would be with Moses if he would go. But notice, look, God didn't force Moses to go. He didn't force Moses to go. God wanted Moses to go by faith in him and obedience to him. God gives you and me a choice today, and he's giving you a choice even in these moments as he's speaking to us. He's giving us a choice to go. God commands us to go. God equips us to go. God wants us to go. God promises to be with us as we go. But listen, God's not going to force you or me to go. God wants us to go by faith in him and obedience to him. Jesus made this clear to us in the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount, quite probably the most impressive and most powerful and the greatest sermon ever preached, ever recorded in Scripture, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, is basically Jesus telling us what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means for us to look, how we're supposed to look, how we're to follow Jesus, what we're supposed to do. And as Jesus finished the Sermon on the Mount, here's the words that he said. He said, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded against that house, but it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded against that house, and it crashed with a great crash. Its foundation was on the sand. God wants us to go by faith and act on his word. God wants us to go by faith and obey his word. God wants us to go by faith today and love one another. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all people will know you are my disciples if, say if, Say if, if you love one another, if, if you hear these words of mine and act on them, this is what will happen. If you hear these words of mine and don't act on them, here's what will happen. We know we can't please God apart from faith in God. Hebrews 11, 6 told us, now without faith, it's impossible to please God because the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So we know God gives us a choice to go and follow him by faith. And we know as we do, we'll be able to please God by 
our faith and trust in him. We show our faith in God and love for God by our obedience to God. As Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And so we're able to walk out our faith in God. We're able to walk in obedience to God by the power of God in us, which is why he placed the Holy Spirit in us. So God gives us a choice, and that choice is whether or not to go. Let's look back at our story, and let's look at the choice Moses made. Let's get back. In verse 10, we see that God gives him the command. Now look at verse 11. God has said, go, therefore go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh so that you may leave my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. That's what God told Moses. Here's Moses. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Who am I? Moses asked God a question. He didn't go. Moses didn't go. He asked God a question. Who am I? Who am I, God? to go. And so we see God immediately, look at this, God, look at God's answer. Moses asked God a question, who am I? Now let's just give Moses just a a moment here. The heart behind the question for Moses could have been honesty. Moses knew he was inadequate in himself to go and fulfill this task, to go to Pharaoh. This task was huge, it was overwhelming, it was God's size. The heart behind the question from Moses could also have been hesitancy. Moses wasn't quite sure if God made the right choice by selecting him to be the one to go and lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Go to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt? Go to Pharaoh, one of, if not the most powerful men in the world at that time? Go to Pharaoh, the one responsible for the misery of the Israelites in Egypt? Moses said, God, who am I to go to Pharaoh? God's response is insightful and instructive. Now look at God's response. Look at this. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Look at verse 12. God answered, I will certainly be with you. And this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Look at God's response. He didn't answer Moses' question. Look at that. Moses asked, who am I? God said, I will certainly be with you. Moses asked, who am I, God? And God said, I will certainly be with you. What an awesome answer from God. What an amazing answer from God. God told Moses in this answer, Moses, it's not about you, it's about me. Moses, it's not about your plan, it's about my plan. Moses, it's not about your power, it's about my power. Moses, it's not about who you are, it's about who I am. Moses should not have been focused on who am I, but instead, whose am I? And what God did in this response is God promised Moses his presence with Moses, which was the greatest answer that God could have ever given to Moses. Success was guaranteed for Moses because God promised to be with Moses. God gives us a choice to go every day, day by day, all through the day. Like Moses, we often respond to God and say, who am I, God, to go for you? Who am I, God? Who am I, God, to be a godly husband? Who am I, God, to be a godly wife? Who am I, God, to be a godly father? Who am I, God, to be a 
godly mother? Who am I, God, to be a godly single adult? Who am I, God, to be a godly teenager? Who am I, God, to forgive those who have hurt me? Who am I, God, to help those who are struggling? Who am I, God, to know what decision I need to make in this very important area of my life? Who am I, God, to lead the people on my team? Who am I, God, to make peace out of the conflict that is going on around me? Who am I, God, to raise godly kids in an ungodly world? Who am I, God, to know how to answer my kids and the questions and the comments that they're hearing from the world that continue to bombard their hearts and their minds that are opposed to the Word of God? Who am I, God, to look into the Word and to answer my children so they can live your way? Who am I, God, to stand firm in my faith for Jesus in a world that is opposed to Jesus? Who am I, God, to invite my friend to church? Who am I, God, to invite my co-worker to church? Who am I, God, to witness to my family member? Who am I, God, to witness to my friend? You see, Satan loves to lie to us. He loves to discourage us. He loves to discourage us by his lies to us, by telling us who we aren't, what we can't do, and how many times we failed God before. And God Almighty is saying to you and to me this morning, he's responding to us the same way he responded to Moses. When we say, who am I, God? God says to you and he says to me this morning, I will certainly be with you. I will be with you. Our almighty God is with us. So what is our application this morning? What's our takeaway as we look to serve the Lord today and this week? It's real simple. Go follow God by faith. Whatever he says, wherever he leads, go go. And as we go, God reminds us life isn't about us. It's about him. This isn't about our plan. It's about his plan. This isn't about our power. It's about his power. This isn't about who I am. It's about who he is. I should not be focused on who am I, but instead, whose am I? You should not be focused on who you are, but whose you are. We are weak, but he, say it with me, he is strong. We are weak, but he is strong. Will it be easy for us to go? No. Will it be smooth as we go? No. Will our enemy and his demonic forces of evil just take his hands away from us and decide, oh, well, they're going to go by faith today, so I need to leave him alone? No. No. Will everything work out the way we want, when we want, as we go? No. Will God always answer our prayers according to our desires and our wishes? Will we be free of opposition and ridicule and criticism as we go? No. But the singular most important question is simply this. Will we succeed as we go? Yes. Because God is with us. He is with us. We are never alone. And he watches over us. And he loves us. And he continues to work in us. And he continues to empower us to follow him by faith in the midst of all that continues to come against us. Don't miss what we see 
in verse 12. And I'll just end with this. This is how amazing our God is. It's how gracious and loving he is. How awesome he is. He says to Moses, hey Moses, I'm going to give you a sign. That I am the one who is sending you to go. Because I know it's going to be difficult for you, Moses. And I know you're going to do everything you possibly can to get out of going. I know you're going to hesitate, Moses. So I'm going to give you a sign. Moses, when you lead the people out of Egypt, you're all, you're all going to worship God on this mountain. Horeb, the mountain of God, Mount Sinai, where God was speaking to Moses about his plan for Moses at that very moment. You see, the deliverance of the Israelites was to result in worship by the Israelites. God's plan for us is to result in praise from us. You see, as we go, we see God's power. As we go, we fulfill God's plan. As we go, we reap God's blessings. As we go, we praise God's name. God's giving us a choice. Right here, right now. Let's go. Whatever he's telling you, whoever he's leading you to go to in these moments, let's go. Let's follow God by faith. And as we follow him, let's be sure that we remember what we've seen in this passage already. God knows what we don't know. God hears what we can't hear. God sees what we can't see. God does what we can't do. Our God is our good, good Father. God, you are good. You do what is good. Teach us your statutes. Lead us in your ever-loving way today, right here, right now. Let me ask you to bow in prayer. Our worship team is going to come and lead in this time of response. Let's respond to the Lord this morning. If God's telling you to go and come and kneel and pray, then go and come and kneel and pray. If God's calling you and telling you to go and encourage a brother in Christ to, to love on your husband, the father of your children, then go and encourage the father of your children. Love on the father of your children. If God's encouraging you to pray blessings upon blessings upon blessings on your brother in Christ or sister in Christ, grow. If you have a need, a care, a concern, go and pray. If God, uh, if you know someone who's struggling and God's calling you to go and love them, encourage them, support them go as folks are already doing now you don't have to wait you can go and respond to the Lord go by faith now fathers take the hand of your wife and go if God's leading you go and lift them up lift up your family lift up your wife in the name of Jesus lead out lead out for your family right now and pray God's blessings over your wife pray God's blessings over your children our pastors, our ministers will be sitting here in the front. They would love to pray with you, pray for you. If you've yet to receive God's gift of salvation, today is the day of salvation. God is here and he longs to have a relationship with you. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to earth to rescue you from your sins. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a perfect death on the cross, taking your place, paying your price. He was buried in the tomb and on the third day he rose again, victorious over sin and death for you and for me. And we enter a relationship with God as we trust in Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection that opens a way for us to receive forgiveness of sins and enter into a relationship with God by his grace through our response of faith, confessing our sin to God, turning from our sin and turning to the Lord and just receiving Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Let's go today by faith. As others are going, let's go by faith together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's stand 
and let's respond in obedience to the Lord.